Hi everyone watching around the world. It is football and your home of Dutch football. Netherlands 4, Scotland 0. A live reaction to the score, to the friendly match. A bit of a preparation for the Euros. And um, it was, I, I've got to say, for a long time, it didn't feel like a great Netherlands performance. And then the last 20, 30 minutes, got some goals, some nice tack in play. And it's a bit more satisfying this evening. Already lots of live comments coming in. Keep them coming, of course. We'll put some out on the show. We'll, we'll ask your questions to the three of us that are here. Um, lots to enjoy. So do stick around for all of that. And of course, if you're not watching live, can you leave us a comment down on YouTube down below and we'll respond to you when we can. So I'm here. Abdul's here. Mike's here to talk about the game. Um, Abdul, do you want to go first? What do you think? Well, um, as we spoke before the show, uh, the result doesn't really uh, reflect the, the flow of the match. I'm glad, of course, that we won, but we have to be honest. Scotland were really dangerous. They, ha they had at least two very serious chances that they wasted. Uh, there are some mistakes uh, in the midfield we need to fix. Um, it was like two matches for Orania. Uh, the, the first uh, 70 minutes, there was a match, and the last 20 minutes was a completely different match where we com completely dominated and destroyed the, the opponent. So we played in two phases in this match, actually. 70 minutes with bad performance, and then 20 minutes with a great performance, and many chances were wasted, not only winning 4-0. How about you, Mike? Yeah, I think that the scoring flatters the Netherlands tonight. I think that I hope Kuman doesn't take the wrong message away from tonight because he, he could easily come out and say that it's a dominant win with 1 4 0. I got it right tonight. But I think for 70 minutes, he tactically with his starting lineup, especially, he got it wrong. Um, and Scotland's high press really caused issues for the Netherlands, especially when they're trying to play out from the back. And yeah, Scotland had chances, plenty of chances. You know, Mark Flecken had to make some really good saves. They had a crossbar um, twice. Uh, defensively, it wasn't great. And yeah, things weren't good until we got our second goal. And after that, the substitutes came on, changed the game. We actually worked better at the end when mm -hmm. they were playing off a back five. So maybe that's the lesson from this is that why change something that wasn't really wrong? beforehand to try and see something different when the 5-3-2 that we saw towards the end of the game clearly works. So I was shocked to see a 4-3-3. I didn't think Kuma would, would go with that against Scotland I thought he might have set in a bit more, been a bit more cautious. Do you think he's saving the 5-3-2 for um, the Germany match on, on Tuesday to, set, to try and play the different tactics in these two games? I think he, what he was trying to do was trying to play 4-3-3 with the middle class opponent. And he might he was thinking maybe of doing that when he plays Austria or the winner between uh, Wales and uh, Poland. But okay. logically, when it comes to France or maybe Germany a, a few days from now, he will switch back to 5-3-2. I still think this team isn't really good enough to play 4-3-3 against world class opponents. Yeah, I think that we'll see 5 3 2 against Germany. I think that the last 20 minutes prove that. And I think it'll be interesting to see what midfield he goes with because I think the midfield he got the starting off with today didn't work. And even in a 5 3 2, it wouldn't work. So we'll see what he goes with against Germany. I think he needs to change it up. Um, I think Reinders was the only one that came out with any credit from that performance. And um, yeah, I think there's a few players that didn't take the opportunity today, like Jeremy Frimpong. Um, playing a right back in a four, it's, it's not something he's used to. It's not something he does. But I think he he didn't do himself justice tonight. Um, I think we'll go on to to the midfield. But you know, we had a terrible game in midfield. Uh, Savvy Simmons wasteful, and apart from getting two assists, I thought Gakpo was quite anonymous on the left hand side as well. Yeah. So there's a lot of things for for Kuman to think about after this game. Um, because the four three three didn't work because you know if Scotland had you know got to 70 minutes two on ahead I don't think you could have really argued with that and um, so yeah I think that the 4-3-3 three, three really right now against most nations really needs to be thought about because at home against Scotland everyone's reduced to to counter-attack in football and playing it long to, to Memphis so 
it's not great. I think for, I think four three three can work maybe against uh, middle class opponents as, as I mentioned, but he really has to make some changes in the midfield. Of course, we have we we can't forget that Frankie De Jong is injured. Uh, once he's back with uh, with uh, Reinders and maybe Vermin as a midfielder today, he added something when he came. He added like spirit to the midfield. So sometimes maybe he will have to start with four three three. It's not lo logical to play against Wales or Austria with five three two unless he decides to do that. You know. Yeah, I think the four three three. I really want it to work because it it gets the best out of some of those attacking players rather than when you've got the five at the back. You you're stifling those guys up front. You don't get much width unless you get done freeze really hard at the pitch. So I thought it was a great chance for Pong. and then I saw Kuman comment before the game to say Frimpong's going to be on the right wing. And it, it, but he wasn't. He was right back. It's just yeah. not really odd why he'd say that. And then because Frimpong was sometimes quite high at the pitch in what Kim was trying to describe, he had to sprint back constantly to try and get back into position. FIFA sometimes covered it and other times didn't. Um, I remember there being one moment, I think it was Travis Simmons was screaming at Matt FIFA to get back into position and, and he didn't get back anywhere near quick enough. Yeah, so I didn't think he had a great, great game at all. But then I don't think Chabie Simons did much either. Again, looking like he's trying too hard in an orange shirt um, rather than just relaxing and playing his game. Or maybe he's out of position and someone like Daniel Marlon should be out on the wing instead of being quite critical of Marlon. But his time on the pitch was superb after he came on. And um, I think he deserves that starting spot at least for a game or so. See how he gets on. Against Germany's pace could be really, really good. And important. Um, Memphis Dummett had the best game ever by his standards, but it was really great to see him back. And you, you could see him gaining confidence and um, getting oil back in the cogs that he will be important again up top. So happy with him this evening. And it was important to get him, get him some minutes. Um, oh gosh, who next? Rinders. I thought, yeah, great. And him next, Frank De Jong. I know people have said in the comments already that they'd love to see them two together again. So would I. Um, yeah, it's some okay performances. The formation was interesting, and FIFA, I think, needs to be left out of the next one. Yep. Yeah, I think that when we first, when they're trying to pass the ball to WeFA against the high press, he really struggled. I think that we talked about in the preview that Scotland's strength is their midfield. You've got yeah. McGinn, McTominay in there, and at points he just bullied the, the, the Netherlands midfield because they're, they're too strong. And I think that part of me thinks that Cumin underestimated Scotland going into this game, thinking we'll have all the possession, we'll pin them back, and that's when Frimpong is going to be the right winger. He didn't expect Scotland to come in high press, give it so much energy, and push the Netherlands back and steal the ball off us. So I think he got that wrong. Um, and I think if actually he lined up in a 5 3 2 from the start, I think it would have helped against the Scotland side. And defensively, there's a, a couple of times where, you know, for the first chance, I think Christie got above here, Trouder, who, again, didn't look the best to me in a, in a, a back four against... No, I thought you know, there were a few times best. where he was really, really caught yeah. out. Yeah. So, like, Van Dijk, you know he's going to start. I don't understand why De Ligt wasn't next to him. I know De Vrij mm. got injured, but just a tall, stronger centre-back against a team that's going to play physical seem to make more sense to me hopefully it's given him a lesson but it hasn't in the past you know here child has had bad games and then immediately just comes back into the living so yeah you wonder what kevin's going to say after this game whether he's going to think he, he got it all right but there is still some glaring messages he got today that need to be pointed out because a four now wins a four now win and that looks great on paper but it wasn't all you know roses for this never one side today Phil Trout allowed uh, two headers, I think, for, for Scotland. He, he's not good on the air, really. Um, we, we have uh, better defenders than him. We have uh, Van de Ven, of course, when he gets back from injury. We have De Fry when he gets back from injury. De Ligt is there. Um, I don't think Phil Trout is the player you start with, you know. We have much better defenders than him. And of course, um, uh, Simmons also, he's still uh, he's still failing to impress with Orania. And to be honest, um, he was like a burden in the match today. He did not create anything. 
and uh, we spoke before the before the show maybe uh, before we went live the, the minute he was substituted the team suddenly got better you know of course uh, also bringing back some players to the field like coop miners also added a lot to the to the team mm. uh, bringing uh, malin also added a lot to the team malin is doing well with the dortmund and we saw today how much uh, he, he gave uh, during the match yeah i think it's going to be some different players again uh, shuffled in against germany and, and marlon could be one of them with so many love comments coming in i feel like i've got to bring some of them in and maybe we can go from there see what everyone's talking about so um but uh let's start with <laughs> comment about reef is interesting isn't it uh Clear child is not a centre back. He's promising it right back in a back four formation. Yeah, he is good at that position for for, for final But then someone to reply to that to say that he's not even good at right back. Saw versus France in that position, he was terrible. Yes. Yeah. Though I do think that was against France and the standard of opposition. I don't think many of them were great that night. Um, uh, comment here to say that no Simons, <laughs> Tajani is the best midfielder. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else we got. Um, Flecken gives me anxiety all the time. Chabby continues to struggle. Milan was good today. Mike, did I see you tweet? Was it around half time or something that Flecken was our best player or something along those lines? What did you think about Flecken? Flecken was very good. good. Yeah, yeah, I think he was good. He made a very good save in the first half. He did not mm. make any mistakes. He looked confident. I did not. What see do you him think about it? the time we passed the ball into? Was it into Rinders and then the ball was lost and Scotland should have scored? It was into Vifa, I think. Was it Vifa instead? Yeah. Was that Viva just being poor in your in your view? No, there, there was two mistakes, one for Viva and one for Rinders, actually. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think that overall, in terms of you know, the saves he had to make, he looked really good. I mean, tipping that header onto the bar, I think that was an excellent save. Mm. Um, there's a couple of times where you know Scotland got through and he, he made himself big. So I think he had overall he had a good game. I think that in the first half, especially, I think he was stand-up performer but in the first half i don't think there was many you could say from the everyone's that actually played well and um, so he stood out so second half yeah there's a few passes that went a bit array i don't like the netherlands passing it out when there's opponents playing a high press because if you're not frankie de jong then yeah i think you struggle against it so there's a couple of times in the first half where he was just hoofing it along and it did to be fair memphis was holding it up so it mm. worked um, so I'd rather see that than trying to play silly little plays around the box that don't really go anywhere and then end up, you know, creating errors. Yeah, no, absolutely. That would be the way to to beat that. And Frankie does beat those presses. It would have been really helpful to have against Scotland tonight. Uh, Flecken also, uh, Flecken also right, made, made a very made a very good save in the second half as well. That shot, we all thought it could uh, be going in, going in the goal, but he saved it. If you remember it, yeah. I do remember actually, yeah, got down quite well. Um, got comment here for Virgil van Dyke again. We forget how how good and how solid he is. And tonight, seemed like doing some of it on his own. <laughs> yeah, you can just rely on him. It doesn't matter what chaos is going on around him. You know, you know, I always know van Dyke's going to be a calm head. There's a few times where he burst forward as well, that I thought was quite nice. He was breaking the lines. Um, you need to see more of that because that's what he does for Liverpool. He actually starts the tax and you need to see more of that when especially when frankie de jong's not there well we've got here a comment from mark saying delict or to right over here trouser please and rally say frimpong was really underwhelming tonight i still want to see him in the five three two against germany yeah the clamor for frimpong was, was was so so strong and so great amongst people that watch our podcast but i do also think dutch people as well and then him so having an okay performance, I don't think it was a bad one, uh, in my opinion. Um, but I think everyone had such great expectations over him um, this evening. He's still a good player, and I'm, I'm sure he'll get another chance. Uh, yes. Let's see who else we've got. We've got um, more negativity for here, Trouder. Um, Scream size says that nothing changed tonight. Here, Trouder will be efficient to start. Humans too stubborn. I'm not going over this team. Um, hopefully you answered your question down about thoughts and Flecken. You thought that he was pretty solid, but a few errors here and there. Yeah. Uh about records going back to Yoda, is he? Um we'll see. Although I do do think this question links quite nice to this other one here about Saudi League being in the top five leagues, whatever in the world. 
just thinking about Vinealdum, who chose money in the Saudi League rather than go back to Feyenoord. It transpired this week, I think it was. What do you think? Would you still say the Odorizzi is a better place to be than the Saudi League if you were going to be develop, still developing yourself or trying to keep trying to keep in touch in Koeman's thoughts ahead of the Euros for the Netherlands? I mean, it well, doesn't really make a difference in the squad anyway, but... Since I'm from the Middle East, I, I do watch some, some matches in, in the Saudi League. I still think the Eredivisie is stronger, uh, is more competitive. Uh, the Saudi League is, is not a, a Mickey Mouse League, what, uh, as like uh, what uh, Kuma I love that phrase, isn't it? Yeah, he said that. It's not really weak, but I don't think uh, it's stronger than the Eredivisie. Um, I, I would love to see uh, Vinaldum back again to Feyenoord or PSV, you know, playing the Eredivisie again, yeah. Or Sparta Rotterdam, that would be more romantic. Uh, yeah, but um, and now since we have uh, PSV and Feyenoord going to the Champions League and Vente maybe, so they might actually choose the, the old Dutch players that play in foreign countries like Saudi Arabia. Or, yeah. <laughs> Never know. Um, let's get some more on. We've got Alex Lai saying, let's not forget how many of these, many do these fours have barely played a game together. Can't expect to be immediate chemistry. That is true. They did get some towards the end of the game. Um, Come here saying the right players for the most part, but the wrong tactics. So I do think it's good to see you too after a long break. Yep, it's been a long while since our last live podcast after a game. We did react to the Nations League, but it has been a while and not very often since the three of us have been, have been together to talk about stuff. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Chavi Simons playing reactionary football. In other words, slow. It needs to be simple and clean. Frimpo was good going forward, but light pay, lightweight, but what pace? Capo was sluggish. Uh, more comments on, on Genie from, from Jack Nanilla. Look way off the pace. Look like he's stuck in sand. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good um, one. <laughs> it was. B4 was horrendous. B4 was bad, B4 was much better. Yeah, that was a kind of vibe overall. I think more have come in since then. Um, can't put them all on. Thank you all for your comments. Put some on yeah. in a bit. Anything you two want to pick up on there from what we've seen? Well, I think all fans agree that uh, Viva was really bad in this match. Yeah. And so far, he failed to impress with Orania. I also think all fans uh, agree that Simmons also uh, failed to impress with Orania. Gakpo has been struggling with the Liverpool as well. You see him good sometimes. He scores two goals. I think he scored two goals the last match he played in the cup. But before that, he just did not impress at all the few matches before that, you know. So he's not really stable with the Liverpool and that might actually affect him with Orania. Uh, the names on paper look good, uh, Gakpo, Depay and Simmons, but uh, playing together did not really work that very well tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think we've not really discussed by now, um, coming back into the side. And I, I didn't want to see him in the squad. Um, what is he said about, that, I don't know. I, I think that for... Over an hour, I think he did absolutely nothing tonight. I think he was slow. There's a few times where he tried to, you know, run onto the ball and got through the Scottish defence, but he was too slow to actually get away from them. So you had to keep cutting back, um, and chances got wasted. And then he comes up and he scores a goal with with a header. Then it suddenly looks like his inclusion was good, but for me, he looks off the pace. He doesn't look like he's been, you know, playing a. You know, he's gone from playing, you know, Champions League football, Premier League to, to playing in Saudi Arabia. It doesn't look like the same Wijnaldum that he was a couple of years ago. And the Wijnaldum that was a couple of years ago was also getting criticism for his performances in the Netherlands. So the fact that he was bad when he was last playing, went away for a year, has come back, and I don't think he's gotten any better, proves to me that he shouldn't be there. And he's keeping players like Quentin Timber on the bench. You know, you got Coop Miners who came on and looked really good when he replaced them. Mm. You've got options, but Cumin insists on playing him for, for 70 minutes when we didn't learn anything. We didn't learn how good he was. I think he looks worse. Um, I don't see him being a really good option for the Euros, unless it's bringing in an experienced head off the bench. For me, it, it just seems like a wasted opportunity when Cumin only has a few more months before the Euros to not try out someone like Timber 
to not try out other options and to keep going with somebody like Wijnaldum who doesn't offer as much as he used to and just looks mm -hmm. slow. But still came up with a goal that made it 2-0 and settled the game. <laughs> but yeah. I do agree with you. Yeah, but it, he, didn't, he, he didn't do anything beside the goal, you know. Nothing at all. Okay. Let's bring up some more comments. Um, we've had a comment here saying that Kuman is saying he's not happy at all, apparently. I did see a quick comment from Virgil van Dijk who was saying that there's lots to work on, but wasn't too negative on the whole thing. But he was he was admitting that the 4-0 wasn't like a deserved scoreline. I think, I think he thought it was a bit strange. Um, but Kuman's comments will be interesting a bit later. Um, as will, of course, Mike's player ratings, which come out a bit later as well on the website. Uh, Michael was saying that we trust Frankie and Van Dyke with the ball. Um, yep, into Frankie back in there. But it'll be due now when we get to see him next. Just on Cumin, um, um, before you go on, go on, I have seen a quote, and this is a quote. Uh, we learned almost nothing from today's friendly, even with the 4 0. I'm not satisfied. We were too slow. We made mistakes every time the ball reached the attack. And then he's actually singled out Xavi Simmons as being not good enough. Which is it, it's nice to hear. Um, I think that he shied away from criticism in the past. So if he is going to start labeling players for not playing well, um, I think he should also name a couple of others for not playing well tonight. Um, but it, it's good to hear that he's not satisfied with tonight, which was my worry at the start that he was soft for now and thought he did a great job. Yes. Without knowing Chabi Simmons personally, how do you think he's taken that criticism? Or how will he when he sees it? Well, uh, I mean, um, I'm sorry to say that, but he seems like a very emotional guy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, he wants to impress so quickly. That's what makes things bad. When you rush into scoring, you perform bad. And I saw him taking uh, many unnecessary shots today. He could have passed mm -hmm. the ball. He wants to score. Maybe if after he scores, he completely changes because we've seen him how he plays with Leipzig and with PSV before that, you know. He's a great player. It's just with Orania, there is a problem with self-confidence. Maybe this will come back to him after he scores a goal, hopefully. Hmm. Yeah, I think the more experienced players will hopefully rally around him. Like You think that players like Memphis will be able to, to take him aside and have a word. I think that players like him will be, be good for him going forward. But yeah, he's, he's snatching at everything. Um, the two chances he had both went quite well wide and um, when there was players in better positions. Um, and there's a few times where he just got brushed off the ball by, by Scotland at times. So, or, or he tries a little flick that doesn't come off. Um, yeah, tonight wasn't his game. And I think what Kuhn will do is he'll take him out against Germany um, start him on a bench and then maybe bring him on with 10 15 minutes to go. He might yeah. make a better impact sub at the moment. Um, yes. until he can bring that, that confidence because I do think he's a player that as soon as he gets a goal, he'll change, he'll, he'll yeah. be much better. He just needs yes. to take that off his shoulders and get that one goal to propel him forward. It would have been good tonight to have had like a penalty when we're two or three up and then he takes that penalty and just gets it over and done with. Yeah, because yeah, it's just you could see it's so painfully obvious that he just wants to score a goal, and after that, I think it'll be, yeah, I agree with you. I think I think he will play a lot better, but he's trying so hard, and you can just see it, <laughs> and just, he wears yeah. it on his face too much. Yes, yes. <laughs> One of the things, if you, if you allow me to say, I was really hoping to see Houghton and Timber tonight, mm. uh, at least for a few minutes, you know. Uh, but I did not see that. Uh, pity. I really, I, I really prefer to see uh, Timber instead of uh, Viver or Schouten. They've or been Vinaldum. Uh, for Vinaldum. But I, I did not mention Vinaldum because I know how much Kuma likes him. <laughs> yeah. Like him in the team. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, I think if we we get through the whole Germany game and Quentin Timber doesn't come on at That's all, a shame. it's a real shame. And you got to wonder what's, what Kuma's thinking, calling him up at this stage to then not even give him any minutes. And then, I guess he's probably that person that's in the squad instead of Frankie. Yeah. But you could have, say, had... You've got enough midfielders if Timber's not there. Because, you know, you've yeah. got Darun as well. We've not even discussed him. He's a, an yes. option. You yes. could have, you know, given his place to someone like Ian Matson, who, hmm. you know, could have came on tonight and changed it to a 5-3-2. So, 
you don't need to include Timber if you're not going to give him any minutes whatsoever and actually take a look at him in a big game. Mm. Um, because the way he's been playing with Feyenoord, I think a lot of Feyenoord fans would agree, he's been better than, than we for this season. So it's time that maybe you switch the two of them and have a look at what the other one can do. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Some more comments. We've got one asking about Zerks playing in the Euros. Um, I just think there's no chance of it. Uh, you have uh, Malin, uh, Broby, Bergfein, Dupai, Gatpo, Simmons, Zerks. You're talking, uh, and of course, Vichorst. You're talking about eight attackers. So the, the competition is very strong there. Uh, to be honest, I don't think Kuman is going to depend on him unless he becomes uh, a world class, you know, in the next few matches and scores so many goals. Otherwise, Kuman will depend on the players he already know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you can uh, you can decipher that Dalinga is not going to be there as well. The fact that oh, and Dalinga, Robbie dropped yeah. out yeah. and Dalinga's not even been selected, which you know that Kuman wasn't convinced by him during the last squad, which is a shame because it was only one one time he's been called up and i just think he did all right when he came on as well but yeah clearly you didn't see enough of him in training to, to think that he was going to be an option for the euros or he would have replaced Bobby in yeah. the squad yeah because um Bobby's gonna I, I still think have a big part to play uh this year is coming up and yes. uh, it's a shame we didn't get to see him in march because that of course would have been important to trying to give him some minutes Maybe he was started tonight and then Memphis comes off the bench, given how little football he's played. But because of circumstance, maybe Memphis has had to start. I don't know. But I hope Robbie still gets to play that big part in June, but despite not having had this opportunity now, I think, to have some time with the squads and time yes. with the players. Because like someone said earlier, like you don't get much time, do you, to have that chemistry, to have that relationship with the players. So you've just got to get on with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally agree. Mm. Um. Comment about Genie again, saying that he someone thinks here that they won't he won't go to the Euros, but Blaine is one hundred one percent sure of going. Yeah, it's, it's just a little chance. Then as a question here, someone also said about him, can he just not come off the bench by now? Then why does he have to start if he's not got all of his fitness for it? And um, is there is there a chance that Van Adam still doesn't go? Is there a chance that after tonight, Kuma goes okay, he scored a goal, but he's not offering enough. Well, in in his in his first uh, time of coaching Orania, he depended on he depended on Vinaldum mm. so much, almost in every match. You know, um, now maybe he wants to depend on him again, but I still suspect that he's gonna. Uh, I still doubt. You know, I still doubt that he's gonna bring him again to to Euro. Uh, but for Blind, I definitely think he will go to Euro. Um, uh, even for the people who don't like to see Blind playing anymore, but he's doing great with the uh, Girona. We all know that in a very strong league. If if when Adam does go to Euro, then I think it's curtains for Darin. I think that it'll be a switch up between the two of them. I think that the midfield options that the Netherlands have now, with Frank de Jong coming back, Reinders, Veerman played really well tonight. You can't take Wijnaldum, Darin, and then drop be for shouting coop miners coop miners it would be a laughing stock and mm -hmm. you'd get questioned you'd get brutalized in the press because i think the press already are having a go at Van Adam after tonight i think some of the dutch press are saying how bad he played tonight so that's that's a plus that he's not getting praised for his performance so i think in the next couple of days you might get some tough questions from the press hopefully um about that performance from from Van Aldum and the fact that his comments to the press didn't really go down well um, the other day as well. So, yeah, if Van Aldum doesn't play well against Germany and others do, then I think he would find it hard to find a reason why he should be in there. But it's coming again, and as Abdul said, he loves Van Aldum, so you'll probably try and find some way of, of shoehorning him in. The Dutch media are tough, though, and I do think Koeman has given in to him a few times. It looks like anyway with these selections. Yeah, yeah. But all, all the other players in the midfield are playing very well with their clubs. I mean, he, he will have no excuse not to pick them, you know, and choose yeah. Vinaldo over them, as as Mike said. So yeah. I don't know if you guys saw it before we go on, but um something I retweeted was from ESPN today about the injured eleven. 
Yeah, I've not seen it. Looks amazing. But it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you've got Bilo in goal, Hartman, Van der Veen, Botman, De Vrij, Timber, Gravenberg, Berghaus, De, Va- De Jong, Xerxes and Brobby, and then that's without even Noah Lang. So that's the players that are currently injured. They can't even, aren't even in the squad. And then you're, yeah. you're thinking about taking somebody like Van Aldum. It's just, it's, it's madness if he, if he does go. Yeah. And of course, yeah, Noah Lang is the 10th attacker. We, we totally for, forgot about him. So um, hopefully he gets well soon and he become ready maybe. I don't know. But uh, the competition is just too strong up front again and too strong in the midfield for Wijnaldum to be picked, you know. I can name at least five players who are performing better with their clubs uh, than Wijnaldum nowadays. I think that that it's going to come together quite nicely in June. I can really see players getting back fit. I'm touching wood right now. (laughs) that they all come back and it's good timing and they're, they're ready to go. And you won't have too many players that would have been embroiled in, say, long European campaigns. Um, unlike someone like John McGinn tonight, he's probably going to play a ton of games with Villa by the time it gets to Scotland. Whereas there aren't too many of those, I don't think, in the, in the Netherlands squad, which, which will serve them well and they'll be ready to go and they'll be fresh. Um, I hope so, anyway. We've got a comment here that relates to Kuhn, we're talking about him. Someone said again, he's not a good coach, not proving anything at this level. Um, don't, tonight is not, not not to super criticise Kuman, but given that he's often a, a topic for us here, people criticising, say, say, the manager and also the, the choices, the players that always get pits when Adam's come up again tonight. What are your thoughts on this comment? Well, people have been criticising uh, Kuman after he left uh, coaching Orani and came back where we uh, lost three matches in a row and conceded like 11 goals in three mm. matches. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned before, uh, switching to 5-3-2 and switching back to 4-3-3 when, whenever he needed, I mean, I would give him a credit for that because he was so stubborn in the beginning. He insisted on uh, 4-3-3 and that cost us, of course, the, the uh, exit of, uh, na- na- of the Nations League. But after that, he switched to 5-3-2 uh, and to 4-3-3 whenever he needed. He was winning all the matches in the qualifier, except for the match against France, which we, I think, had maybe 11 injuries at that match. Many players did not play in that match. Uh, and still, it was a very tight match where we lost 2-1 to the best team in the world, in my opinion. And after that, he just keeps winning. Maybe our problem with his, uh, with his, uh, with with the, some of the names he is choosing, you know. But again, it's a friendly. He has all the right to test all the players he needs, and we will see how he's gonna play against Germany. I hope and I expect him to make some changes as well. That's the point of having friendly. So I might disagree with this about Kuman. Yeah, I think the Kuman deserves credit for tonight because I think that. For some things tonight, he got it wrong from the start. He underestimated Scotland from the start, I'll give him that. But he changed the game with his substitutions. He saw what went wrong. Second half, he switched it up, brought the right players on. And then you end up winning 4-0 because his changes actually worked. He's come out in the press and he's criticised the performance, which is good. And he's, he's praised for that. Um, what I want to see from him against Germany is getting it right from the start instead of having mm-hmm. to make changes and having to switch and alternate. I want him just to get his team selection right. Pick the best players, not just ones he wants to see in, in little combinations. Just pick the best 11 against Germany from the start. Let's go against them. Let's try and get the win that we need before the end of this break. I don't think he's tested out the players he, he wanted to test tonight. Um, like I, I would have preferred to see Timber tonight. This is a... Uh, I don't want to say it. I'm Scottish and I don't want to say it, but it's a lesser opponent in Germany. Why not give Timber a few minutes and then go strongest 11 against Germany? But we'll see. This is not the Euros yet. We can't criticize him for that. He's not led and everyone's into a, a big tournament yet. So we can't really criticize City. He's not the right man for the job. Tournament football is a lot different from qualifying football, which is a lot different mm. from Nations League. Let's we'll see what he does on the, the big stage when he has tournament experience. He's won the Euros. So. He knows what that's like. Um, so I don't think he's really proven at this level yet. So I don't think we can say he's not the right man for the job until we get past the Euros. Yeah, I totally agree with Mike. Yes, 
He hasn't coached any any big tournament uh, yet. You know, he helped us uh, qualifying to Euros, and um, this is the second time. So we need to see him in a major tournament. But all the indicators tell us that he is learning from the, from his mistakes, and that's good. I think a friendly is a great time to try things, and he did try things tonight, and he's realised it somewhere it worked, and that's that's really positive. I think I think that's a great place to to leave that conversation about Kuman for now and. We'll come back to it again after the Germany game as he, as he changed things again. And of course, yeah, a big conversation happens after the Euros, isn't it? How have they actually performed? Moving on to Germany versus Levens, and we won't be doing a preview show for this game coming up, but we will, of course, do a live stream afterwards. So you two guys, what what's your prediction ahead of a Germany game? I mean, it's quite hard because it's a friendly, but I, I can see a draw in this one. But I did say that tonight and I was I was wrong. <laughs> Well, I predicted Holland to win 3 0 tonight, which was close. We won 4 0. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, ab about Germany, before I predict the results, uh, lo logically, Kuman is going to go back to 5 3 2. Uh, that's the first thing I think he's, he's going to do. I think he should. I think he's tried the 4 3 3 tonight, like you said, against a different team. And he's shown that he's able to change the formation. The players can play with different formations too. Yes, and maybe he will give a, he will give a role to Frimpong again. Frimpong with five three two with gig, with mm -hmm. giving him more chance to attack is much better than Frimpong playing as only a right back where he has to go back most of the time. You know, uh, that's one of the things. I think he will also make some changes in the midfield. He might give some uh, extra minutes to uh, Coop Miners maybe. Um, after all, I expect uh, a totally different performance. Hopefully, it's better. And I will. I still predict Holland uh, to win uh, two one. Yeah, we're going to go five three two. I think Malin will probably get a start in this one. I think that he did enough tonight yeah. to prove that. I think if he goes back to five three two, it'd be a Malin Memphis forward line, um, and I'd like to see how how Malin will do. I'm going to go two 0 Netherlands. I think that Germany are side still. Trying to find themselves ahead of the Euros. Not had many competitive games. Not the strongest Germany side in many years. So I think Netherlands should go into this one as favourites. And if Kuman gets it right from the start, plays 5 3 2, gets the right selection, picks the right midfield, um, then yeah, I can see Netherlands winning this one. Do you know? Yeah. Great. Um, there are some more questions coming in. So we'll keep the show going, shall we? Because I think people are happy to keep <clears throat> listening to us all. So I've got um, Dan saying, any thoughts on Alayo? Please have been the third goalkeeper if Bilo has a chance for the Euros. I think if Bilo's fit, yeah, he comes back. I think it, as a goalkeeper, you can be fit with, say, a month to go and you can make your way in. I think that's fine, especially if you might end up being the third choice goalkeeper. I don't think Bilo will come in and be first choice now. I think he would have been otherwise. I've not watched Bizo since he left RZ, if I'm honest with you. I spend too much time watching the Rizzi and don't have much time for the football other than my beloved Aston Villa. <laughs> so I think Ali is a decent choice to go. I don't see why not. Um, Bizo was a strange out of nowhere choice, wasn't it? Given that Ali hasn't suddenly played badly for Sparta. Yeah. Yes, but maybe he will not, cho he will not choose uh, uh, any of them, you know. He might go with uh, Flecken and Bailo and uh, uh, what's his name? Yeah, so he will not really choose Olai or Bibizo if, he, if all the goalkeepers are ready. But if uh, if Bailo is still injured, I think uh, I, I would go for uh, Olai. Yeah, I think the, the fact that Kuman came out straight away and was just like Flecken's playing one, but Brooklyn's playing another one means that. The third choice is really he wants Bio back, and if he's fit, he'll be there. Um, I think Eli does well. I think he did really well for Sparta against Ajax, um, and he's a reliable goalkeeper. Bezo, I, I keep hearing his name coming up. Is playing well in France, but I've not seen him play. I don't mm. know how consistent he is. Um, you know, he was good for years at AZ, so. He is a reliable goalkeeper, but yeah, I think as soon as Bio is back, that's the, the free going forward. Yeah, 100%. Uh, Michael here said he wants to talk about Sex New Jersey, so let's do that. Do we still like it? I've got to say, I, I, did, I like it a lot. I still gave it, like, was it an 8 out of 10 I gave it in the preview show? 
I, I saw the yellow again tonight. I don't, I don't know what it is. I think I still get it, but I didn't notice it be all yellow again and, and all amongst all the orange. And I, I don't no. know what I thought about that, but I still love it the badge. Looked, it looked orange to me, but anyway, I think it's the best jersey, the best color since 2014. Yeah, I agree. I thought it looked great. I think the it's a much bigger upgrade than what they were wearing um, yeah, previously. So, yeah, I think it's that's a plus point. It's, it's better than that, and I think that um, it's a winning jersey. It's a Euro winning jersey. So, yeah, let's get behind it. That's what it's. <laughs> okay. Thanks everyone so much for the live comments, uh, and of course, like we said, if you are watching live, leave us a comment on YouTube. We'll get back to you. If you enjoyed this show, give us a like. Um, lots of people watching live. If you'll give us a like, that'd be fantastic. Uh, it'd be great to have a, um, one of our highest like titles ever because people really enjoy these podcasts. So show us that. Show us that you enjoy these live streams afterwards. We'll keep doing them for you because um, that, of course, helps us grow, helps us keep doing what we're doing. Um, so thank everyone for listening and watching. We wouldn't be doing it without you. And um, thanks, Abdul. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. So we're doing the same thing again then after Germany. Yeah, another win as well. Another four 0 win, hopefully. But yeah, yeah another back to wall performance. Maybe yeah. uh, <laughs> another one where they should be winning. See, I think my prediction of what was I say one one or two two or something like that. That wasn't too far from what we should have seen tonight. Um, I don't know. I think we just were happy because we won. But given it's a friendly, I think there's still a bit of that sour taste. Like, oh, really, the Scotland should have won tonight. And I think if I'd have been one or two up. I don't know if the Netherlands would have come back into it the way we did and scored those goals, but we're leaving happy. But it's it's real. Of, of course, it's a friendly, but it's always good to beat Germany. You know, it will, uh, uh, yeah. it will give so much confidence to the team. Yeah. So hopefully we do win. <laughs> okay, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your kind comments. Um, thank you everyone for watching. See you again after Germany game.